The question now is that will the PSE index stay on that upward trajectory all the way to today's close? Investment manager Mix Lopez from AB Capital Investments joins us to make sense of all the different market forces at play. Mix, I never thought I'd see this today. The biggest two-day gain since election month. Now, we also got the dollar <laughs> weakening for a second day. Then there's also the Chinese yes. third quarter growth at 6.7% in line with forecasts. How will all of this affect markets in the short term? Right. But in the short term, it's net positive for the Philippine markets and anything for the global markets that still will be a bit of a net positive effect for the markets. What we're seeing right now is that with inflation still just on expectations for the United States and with Chinese data, growth data, that being in line as well, we are seeing that expectations are being met and this is important because this is going to buoy the market above its current levels. All right, well, now yesterday was another outflow day. Despite hefty gains on the index, kind of an irony over there, yes. are we seeing some more support from domestic funds and investors because of good bargains, or is it something else entirely? Okay, if you're going to look at today's trading session, the well, it's actually not net foreign buying for, well, for foreign funds. What we're seeing right now is that two things. First off, the market is trying to move on. It's trying to move on from what? It's, it's trying to move on from all the political risk, and now they're moving into policy risks. But if you're going to look, it's just three key earnings season is just, what, a week or two away, and we've seen actually one of the, well, some of the, the companies being able to release their, their three key earnings. What we're going to look out for right now would be any tailwinds that's going to push the market upwards. Right now, we see President Duterte visiting China, and with that, we're going to look and we're going to see that this is actually going to be net positive again for the Philippine markets. One of the things I'm looking at right now is that the Philippine markets is trading at around 21 times PE. This is important because we're trying to move above the 20 times PE mean reversion level. What we're looking at right now is that the markets is going to, well, the markets are going to be pricing in a bit of a good earnings result. All right, now let's move on to support levels. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we saw in one day uh, just the index like sinking below one support yeah. level after another. Now, are we looking at new support levels okay. or would you say okay. it's too early to call? Well, 7.5 has actually been a support level for the market for the longest time. Whether this is a firm or a strong psychological level is something that, that should be questioned. On our end, we believe that 7.3 is the firm, and, well, the firm psychological support level for the market. 7.5 has been a pass-through. If you're going to look at it, the flows, has been rather, the flows have been rather been, been very strong. They've been able to pass 7.5 easily. Now, that's why we're looking at 7.3 and 7.7 now for the range. All right, Migs, now we have more impending um, surprises, I guess, from the DENR when it comes to the mining sector. Now, you yes. like Semirara stocks, which has so far yes. been arguably volatile, especially within the past 30 days, to say the least. Now, yes. granted, it has gotten yes. past a number of hurdles already, uh, just in the past couple of months as well. What are you seeing here? Well, if you're going to look at the company Semerara, it's not just mining, it's not just power, it's both. If you're going to look at its earnings for, I think, for the first half, it's actually been pretty, pretty good. So if you're going to look at it, it's going to be traded at around, what, 12 to 13 times P, and you're going to look at the market that's trading at around 21 to 22 times if it's optimistic. Now, if you're that company that's been able to do operations well, with an exemplary manner, if by, three, by the third quarter, if you've been able to, to what, sur surpass or meet expectations for full year, then it's just going to be gravy. Any earnings that you're going to do for the fourth quarter will just be gravy. All right, let's move on to Century Properties, who just increased their public float to 100% of common shares effective yes. today. Yes. Now, this somewhat unorthodox move in the local real estate scene, especially for a property developer. Now, what gives? Mm -hmm. Well... Two perspectives that I have right now. First, it provides them with liquidity to move into the market. And second, it provides them now the ability to have new investors on the, on, on the fly. If they, if, they, if they need to have new invest, investors or joint ventures, this will be able to give them such, that, such flexibility on their end, on their financial end. All right. Thank you very much for your insight. Migs Lopez from AB Securities, or AB Investments, rather. <laughs>